Uh, we're in Los Angeles. We're at the previously known Staples Center, the Convention Center ledge. first time I saw this spot, I remember I was driving along the freeway and there was this big staircase with this huge, massive chunk of concrete down the middle of it. So I saw it and went, ah, skate spot somehow, maybe. None of these buildings were all here. It was just kind of like wasteland and they were starting to build some of these bigger buildings on this side of, the, of downtown. It was kind of messy and not easy to get to. That would have been probably around late 98 or something like that. I came here first, kind of had a look at it alone. The first thing that struck me was, dang, it's kind of tall. Is it even to code? Like, probably not. Back then, like, a lot of the rails and, you know, big hubbers we were skating weren't, weren't, like, this high to your shoulder to get on, but that's what I was always looking for. I'm like, I've seen the normal ones. Show me something I haven't seen. Push it. At the time, I was just trying to do the biggest of everything I could possibly do, try and find the spot big enough to handle the freaking trick. This was my very first Vans ad, doing a 50-50 on this ledge. And when I first started riding for the brand, I remember going to do this and going, this is gonna be kind of the ad, I'll try and get a photo today. I'm gonna wear a red t-shirt, black pants, like the Vans logo, get all psyched up. Put some Made in USA black canvas eras on, which is what I had. I purchased them from the local van store myself. I made sure to come Saturday morning. I thought, okay, it'll be kind of quiet. There's not much going on downtown that time. So there's always a little bit of intensity when I'm shooting with Dan because he's the best skate photographer that ever lived. When you call him and you go shoot with him, you better step up. Came with a videographer, Kirk DeAnder, who filmed it across the road, and then Thomas Campbell filmed it from up over in the bushes over there somewhere. <laughs> um, and then my friend Luke filmed it from up top too, and that was it, nobody else here. You have to kind of look at it on the day to know whether, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Because you could easily come to a spot like this and go, I'll come back next weekend or I'll come back in a week or two when I feel a little bit more confident. Um, but I remember coming here going, I gotta do it right now, fuck, because I feel good. So I skated it the very first time I came to skate it. These spots, you always give them a particular look so that we can gauge your speed before you get on. I just remember timing the security guard going around the building. It took nine minutes, so I knew I'd have three goes max, maybe two goes every time you go. And I knew that if they came back around while I was in the middle of doing it or going full speed or they saw me bailing it, it would be kind of like a lot for them to see, like a lot of action. I thought, dang, if anyone even sees me trying this, I'm definitely going to get kicked out. I remember I had to do loops because the run-up's not that long for how high it is, if you know what I mean, especially when you've never skated it before. You want to get that just right. So I remember the first few goes, I was going a little too fast. And then once I got it right, I had the right impact. Five to six goes, I think, something like that. It wasn't very long, half an hour, 20 minutes. I think I did a 360 flip over in the middle of the road. I wasn't even looking at my board. That was my stoke. It stands out for me because it was one of the first taller ones that I was skating, but it's just another skate spot to me. I skated here in 99, it's now 2023. 20, it looks just the same to me. I still want to skate it, you know. Chad Fernandez, I think, was one of the first persons that skated that I remember seeing skate around the same time I did, like shortly thereafter. Chad's really not on the skateboarder, so it didn't, it didn't surprise me. Until Jeff skated it, for the first time I saw the photo with Dan Sturt. It was super impactful, man. It was crazy. Like, he set the bar super high. People had their go-to tricks, and that was, that was mine at the time. And you'd only get, like, one try here, maybe two, because they'd have you on camera coming up and then cruise around on the golf cart. That was Thanksgiving. That was the only day we can go where we actually, I got, like, at least 15 minutes. It's one of them spots that's like guys come here and try to step up to it. 
I mean, I've seen at this point most of the basics done. Your front side 50s, your back side 50s, crooked grinds, lots of nose slide attempts. I tried to nose slide it as well shortly after grinding it and got a bad heel bruise. It was wet when I was going full speed at it and for whatever reason I slipped out and got hurt before I could make it. Jaws kick for grab, didn't he? I mean, the stairs are there, but there's cleaner, nicer stairs. Honestly, the, the nose blunt that Clive did, that was banging. That was good shit right there. That's what, like, I went, that is pushing it. That's pushing it, you know? That's a step up. Like, that's a tall ass ledge to be getting over the top of and committing to like that. I was skating past the statue when I did the nose blunt. It was funny, there were some kids there who were just checking out the statue, and they asked me, they're like, are you gonna try something? And I remember saying to them, I was like, I ain't gonna try shit, I'm about to nose blunt this thing. Like, fully, like, knew I was gonna do it. Not a question in my mind. The statue being there, honestly, was more of a coincidence than just the timing. My body felt good, and I was, like, really hungry and really wanted to do crazy shit at that point. When I was a kid, Jeff was doing like the biggest and the craziest tricks and I thought that that was really sick and I wanted a part of that. Give homage to Jeff, making that breakthrough and like creating the spot, you know? I remember this, the spot around the side of the convention away from this big hub we're looking at right now. It's kind of out the way. It's a weird part of the road. Similar kind of hub it goes halfway down this double set and there's a rail on the top of it and it goes flattened down. And Dane just saw it himself and went and did it. Yeah, it was rad. It's always nice to see someone finding a new spot on an old spot. That's right in front of everybody else. That's magic. There's a ton of spots that like only a couple of people hit over the years and it's cool. It's rad when that, you know, when we have spots and they stay around. It's proven ground shit. It, like if you want to know where you sit in the space of like an amateur professional skateboarding, go to one of those spots that, you know, you see as an icon of a skate spot. I remember coming to America and going to like Carlsbad Gap and going to you know, Santa Monica Triple Set and just wanting to know what they look like. What does it look like? How high is it? How far is it? Like I want to know that. People still skating this like 20 odd years later and it's a, a landmark or a spot in LA that people know about. That's what makes skating rad. That's cool. If that inspires a kid to step up, come here, look at it going, I'll bet you I can backside lip slide that. That stokes me out. The whole point of it is find it, skate it, and then move on and keep doing that. Now, and the ones that stand out are usually for a reason. They, like, they usually are what you think they are. They're either tall, they're long, they're all the above. Keep hammering them down, keep finding them. Someone needs to find one that's twice the size, three times the length, twice the height, and do that. That's what we're looking for.